हेलो हाय एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू लिटिल अंडरेटेड और टुडे वी आर गोना चेक आउट अ वीडियो बाय अक्षय टाइटल डेस बजट 2023 ऑनेस्ट डिस्कशन विद फाइव आईयूसी चाम लेट्स अप टू द वीडियो Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So today I am very excited to shoot this video because I am joined by my wife Aishi Chand and we are going to discuss about budget, not our household budget but the nation's budget and what, what specifically are we going to speak about. So number one, we are going to touch upon the basics of budget. What is it that a common citizen should understand some of the key points why they should even bother about this document. Second key thing, we are going to discuss about 2023 budget expectations. What are some good bad stuff that might happen. Third and finally, we are going to talk about the market scenario and the impact on budget on the stock markets. Now you might have a natural response by you know this quick introduction that you are trying to spread nepotism on YouTube, inviting your family members, this, that. So, okay, so over to Aishi to speak about her qualifications and then we will jump into the topic. Hi everyone, I am Ayushi. I am an Indian Economic Service Officer and I have worked with the Ministry of Finance for the last seven years. I have worked on various budgets, so that gives me one qualification. I have also done my economics honours from SRCC and then my masters in economics. Subsequently, I also worked with the Planning Commission of India. So these are my qualifications and on today's video, we are going to discuss about budget 2023 and what can we expect out of it. Okay, awesome. So you have boasted really well. Okay. On that note, side topic, who is your favourite YouTuber? Very difficult question. There are so many, so many. But I think my favourite YouTuber is uh, someone whose name starts with A and ends with T. Okay, so it's Sankit. I don't know who that is, but okay, let's move on. Okay, so let's quickly start the topic. So first and foremost, what exactly is budget? Why is it needed? If you can throw some light on that. Very simply put, budget is a roadmap for any country. It shows what are the income sources and where are we going to spend that money. To contextualize at an individual level, we get our salaries and we have to decide how to spend that money. Similarly, at a national level, budget is something which is prepared by the government to decide how much revenue are they getting and where exactly do they want to spend that money. Okay, so there are essentially two, three parts if, if I understand it correctly. So one is that, you know, we are going to speak about how much money they have made, right? And where are they going to spend it? Which specific states are going to get how much money? Is that also covered? So if you can just quickly touch upon some fundamental points on budget, what Mota Mota is covered in budget? Budget will talk about revenue sources, whether it is from tax revenues or other revenue sources, which we'll discuss later in the video. Then it, spend, it discusses about what are the expenditure. For example, how much money is to be spent on schemes, how much money is to be spent on welfare of people, how much money will go towards defense, health, education and different sectors. So these are broadly the two categories which are covered in the budget. Then of course there are something outcomes and outputs also. For example, the schemes which are implemented earlier, what is the outcome achieved out of that? So in that context, um a few key questions come to my mind as a common citizen that you know this looks like an academic exercise that you know the budget is going to get presented people get super excited news channels discuss all this stuff but these decisions can also be made throughout the year by the government right and they might be making it so then why is it that we need or get so excited about this document called as budget and uh, that's a very good question and the simple answer is that yes of course decisions uh, are taken throughout the year also but to take those decisions, we need to have a vision and budget is that vision document for one year. It gives a roadmap on where are we intending the country to head to. Depending on the need and contextualization, of course decisions are taken throughout the year, some schemes may be introduced, some announcements may be made by the government, but to have that long term vision document on where exactly are we heading and how are we going to utilize the money that we have got so far, mm -hmm. we need a budget document at the starting of the year. So if I have to contextualize it to me, so for example, if I'm making let's say a salary of 1 lakh rupees, right? I will write it on an Excel spreadsheet or with pen and paper, ki achha, ek lakh salary mil rahi hai. I'm going to spend like 50,000 rupees on my rent, 30,000 here, there, everywhere. So I have a mota mota idea and I get that that is what budget also means at a national level. This is what any common person would be thinking. Now comes the natural question that are there like punishments associated with not meeting these goals? That if you say on the budget that, okay, we are going to spend X percent money in health care, Y percent money in education, we'll give you to these four or five states. If those things are not met, then is there any punishment mechanism associated with it? Okay, this is a very interesting question yeah. and let me just introduce a very small concept here which is called as politics. So economics and politics go together. Mm -hmm. Now budgets are something which are prepared by the government in power at that particular time. So punishments 
if you say that if there are any punishments or if the politicians are made accountable mm -hmm. yes they are through the elections that they have to contest later on mm -hmm. but with respect to whether they are meeting the targets or not there are no particular punishments as such this will be dictated by what are the final outcomes of the budget which i introduce in the next year's economic survey which gives a very broad picture of what was projected and how much of it have we met so no punishments as such but yes definitely the economic survey will give you a overall scenario of how far we have come from the budget that we had anticipated okay so very quickly breaking down so budget is a separate document economic survey is a separate document go and read both the documents in case you get time it's a little bit nerdy intellectual in case you don't want to do it do comment below we'll make another video on budget updates and economic survey updates and we will present it to you in simple language but please understand that budget is a separate road map type of a document economic survey is an economic analysis of whatever has happened in the last year absolutely so correct economic survey is introduced on 31st of january which is today and budget is introduced on 1st of february for the next year so budget document is forecast economic survey is like the report card of your economy got it now uh, comes a very uh, you know i was looking at the data and i'll present the data for our audience here also it is always said that the budget we always invest in deficit so just to understand the economic equation here uh, that will be profit is equal to revenues minus cost so from that perspective we are always in minus so what is the meaning of this deficit that we always exist in deficit and is it something that we should worry about uh, so this is a common misconception that deficits are bad deficits may not always be bad till the time we are spending the money to productive uses for example if we are constructing a dam we have got some income and we are constructing a dam out of it we borrowed some money and we spent more than that we anticipated more than the income we had but for the construction of that that dam we employed a large number of people we gave them wages they fed their families they could educate their children they could provide for health care for their children this means that overall the well being of the nation is increasing if for example we are spending that income that we got on non productive uses for example maybe just digging a hole and filling it back this will not be counted as good deficit because you know it is not creating any wages it is not increasing the overall well being of the citizens so deficit per se may not be bad it really depends on how you are spending that money so in economic terms we can segregate this into productive use of capital versus unproductive use of capital yes. so as long as we are even if we are creating a deficit on the budget deficit means ki minus mein chalna cheez hoga and you have taken loan and things are you know loan is piling up that is called as creating a deficit but if you are taking that loan in order to create productive capital right and productive things then probably it's fine but if you are doing it for unproductive purposes then it is bad so is my understanding correct yes okay awesome very quickly plugging in the sponsors for today because ghar mein char paise aayenge right so from that angle uh, so today's sponsor is small case and many people are worried about the entire volatility that is happening in the stock market so small case is a wonderful platform for you to do your investing so there is a very interesting small case it is called as all weather investing small case so this small case helps you hedge your risk by investing across equities which are stocks bonds debt and gold so you can go and check it out i will also link some of my favorite small cases in the description and comment box so do go and definitely check it out section 2 is that we will just quickly touch upon some of the key considerations in 2023 budget people are speaking a lot that hey will it be a good budget bad budget oppositions will definitely criticize and i even before the budget getting released it's, it becomes a bad budget similarly the supporting parties will say that it's a good budget irrespective of whatever happens so how would you categorize a good versus bad budget if you can quickly touch upon the semantics around it so irrespective of what political parties think let's not go into that debate good budget is something which helps in the long term growth of the country as we just that bad budget is something which does not so i would ask you this question as a common citizen what is something that you expect out of a budget zero tax okay <laughs> that may not be possible but yeah to be a little more practical right so now i i would rather like you know take a pause here and i'll just quickly touch upon the concept of being a popular budget so you said that you know what if the budget makes people happy that is a good budget i don't necessarily agree with that because by that logic you know zero tax kar diya and everyone will be very happy but that probably would not make sense so probably touching upon there right we can unfold this thread that if zero taxation happens on budget then what would it lead to right i mean is that possible can it theoretically be done how would the 
system work like till the time there are governments i do not think that zero tax is possible because governments have been constituted to fulfill certain obligations to the society right mm -hmm. and in any society there are different income levels there are different strata of society so budgets or if we make it completely zero tax just consider that mm -hmm. you know situation where there is no tax at all then there is no need for the government also how are they going to spend the money um i would rather have a slightly different view point here so there are some countries where there is zero taxation or almost close to zero taxation for example middle eastern countries they have a lot of resources so zero taxation is possible there for example monaco where there are financial hubs and there is close to 0% taxation so very quickly putting on the chart where the indian government is making money and from this i can see that almost 95% or 90 95% comes from our tax revenues and 5% comes from non tax revenues so is there a possibility that government government can make money without taxing people too much can't that be done or at least this mix can be improved right maybe we'll not go to zero taxation but we can get to a point where non tax revenues from the government if they are effectively managing their business it goes up to 20 30% is there a so, possibility just to contextualize 90 95% may be incorrect yeah. 60% of the of the money that is spent comes from tax revenues and 5% yeah. comes from non tax revenues so there and is a between tax and non tax then 35% is from borrowings that is borrowed maybe from outside institutions or through the private markets so 60% is through tax revenues to contextualize you talked about countries like uae where there is almost zero taxation it is not comparable to situation in india and why is that because uae is a resource rich country that you correctly pointed out it is rich in oil it is rich, rich in petroleum reserves which it can export to generate more revenues and those revenues can be utilized for the welfare of the people absolutely correct but that cannot be compared to situation in india because india has a huge population income inequality is very high there are different income levels and we need to cater to all kinds of population so we are not a resource rich country we have to generate revenues through other sources and how can we do that through productive capital formation right so that's a fancy economic word productive capital formation so if you can break it down what exactly is that means by giving a few examples productive capital formation can be investing in the skills and education of our of our population of yeah. people we do have one resource which is called as demographic dividend another fancy economic term yeah. which means that we have a large a uh, younger segment of the population who is just entering into the workforce so if we invest in their skills in their capabilities mm -hmm. and we make them capable enough to you know work harder to generate more income for the economy this will create a long term growth trajectory for the country understood so now uh, the natural question comes that if i am a young person in india right and uh, you spoke about demographic dividend then one of the key things that i would worry about is the taxation right because a at least the numbers that i'm seeing and i'll put it up for people also that if you take a look at the e effective tax rate in india it is typically going up for the last 25 odd years irrespective of whichever government has been in the power and that's one and even the indirect taxes have been going up in india so people pay a large part of their income or a higher part of their income in form of direct income taxes and also if they are just going and buying stuff in the indian economy they are paying taxes on top of that so taxation structure is very high that's a second is that the high paying jobs in india are not that high which is bad so how do you think that budget can counter this problem what are the areas it should focus on tax rationalization is something which every budget every year should cover and this is something which has been debated in the public also for quite some time this is something that this year's budget should also cover to a very large extent and i do not know the budget to be very very honest i do not know the document i have not read it i don't know anything about it this is something which we need to focus on in order to ensure that the people who are entering the workforce are not uh, bogged down by the taxes no, but, that they are putting but, but that's a good speech we keep on hearing these speeches from a lot of people from the government no offense right from that perspective i can say i'm not poking at the government but having said this uh, is there a way right i mean you can can you tell like specific steps that point 1 2 3 this can be done that will somehow at least start addressing the, the the problems that i just spoke about of high taxation or taxation going higher and be people not having high impact jobs or high paying jobs let me introduce a very small economic concept here which is yeah. called as the laffer curve mm. now for those who have studied economics they might already be aware of it but laffer curve basically gives the argument that a lower tax rate actually increases the tax revenues for the government 
this means that there are less of uh, tax avoidance and people do not evade taxes at all. Mm -hmm. So lower tax rates are proven to be beneficial for any government. With that context in mind, I think there are certain measures that can be introduced by the government in order to ensure that you know more taxes are collected and uh, there is more equitable distribution of uh, this tax structure. It could be m maybe increasing the exemption limit, it could be increasing the income tax labs, or it could also be introducing some kind of uh, taxes specifically for those who are engaged. <laughs> you know, this is going to be a very debatable point at home later on, but some kind of taxes for the high net worth individuals mm -hmm. and maybe lowering the tax structures for those who are in the middle class. So here is an interesting data point that I would like to show you. This talks about the wealth gap in India uh, and how it has progressed over time. So for example, in 1961 to 1970, uh, the share of bottom 50% was approximately 12.5% wealth. It has come down to literally half. 6.12% of entire wealth in India is owned by bottom 50%. Rest approximately 94% of wealth is owned by top 11%. So in context of this rich poor divide, uh, you were saying that, hey, the mechanism should be built where middle class is taxed less, right? Okay, if middle class is taxed less than rich, the people who are at the bottom start of the society, they probably can't afford to pay taxes, right? they would not have discretionary income, then you can go and charge the rich. Then again, the capitalistic debate comes into the picture that if you are charging the rich who are building businesses, providing a lot of employment, they would have option of shifting their business from India to some other country. So how is that a practical solution? Uh, that is absolutely correct. And this there is no right or wrong answer to this. When uh, Warren Buffett said that he pays lesser tax than his secretary, this is actually a debate which is going on uh, across the countries all over the globe. So this is something which has no right or wrong answer. But in order to ensure that a larger base of population is covered who are willing to pay taxes, we need to ensure some kind of tax rationalization. So for example, we must ensure that we widen the tax base. That means that we cover a larger segment of the population who are willing to pay taxes on their own. Now, to do this, you know, we need to again rationalize the taxes. The second point is that... So, uh, what do you mean by rationalizing the tax and taxes? Right? I'm not a taxation expert. So, if you can break it down for me, that this tax structure becomes simplified. So, what would that be? For example, introducing more tax labs could be one alternative. For example, right now in the new tax regime, anyone who's earning more than 10 lakhs per annum has to pay 30% tax. So instead of that, you introduce another tax lab, say of 15% or 20% at 10 lakh income level. Mm -hmm. And then at 15 income lakh level, you introduce another tax lab and you know, just keep on increasing it. So that means that depending on your income level, you introduce more tax labs. So this could be one example. The second point is introducing some kind of tax incentives for smaller businesses and not only focusing on the you know big businesses which are already established. Why is that important? Because smaller businesses are the ones which have been proven to employ more people. So India is a developing economy, India has been called a startup economy. So incentivizing these startups to actually grow and employ more people can benefit and can improve the welfare of all the citizens. Okay, so all these things I understand, these are like, you know, statements I anyways keep on reading, this, that, right? So, they are diplomatic stuff. Achha, tell me like one thing, this is a thought exercise, even I don't know about this, whether it can be done or not. But in terms of filing taxations, right? I mean, first, if you are a small business owner, first and foremost, track your GST, then file your GST, then file your income tax, pay advance tax. There is like so much complication just filing it. So, why can't government just take money from my account, right? And especially like to salaried people, right? I mean, if you are getting a salary, they can easily compute how much money you are making. So why can't these type of steps be done? Now this is a very uh, debatable question because hmm. if the government does that then it will uh, it will you know start another round of debates. So this is not something that the government does. The government trusts its firms, its businesses to actually disclose their income and to pay taxes accordingly. Okay. It does not because businesses are you know very cyclical. You do not know when, what how much uh, income is a but, business But for salaried involved. people it can be done. It is being done already. For example, I am a salaried person and my tax is deducted right before we get the salary. That is tedious, but you still have to file income tax at the end of the year. Yeah, because oh. there are other investments that I might be making, that there are other instruments I might have purchased, there are other assets I might have purchased. So, government trusts me to, you know, disclose my assets. And if I have made any kind of capital gains on those assets, I must disclose, close, disclose it to the government and pay taxes accordingly. But again, like, I mean, quick thought exercise, right? A lot of people, for example, there are ATC, ATD deductions, etc., etc. They might not be 
participating in that right and there are benefits in terms of participating in terms of taking uh, these benefits now people don't do it because of awareness issues they are little bit scared all that so so if a system can be built and automated and i'm just bra just brainstorming i'm not trying to prove that this can be done cannot be done i'm just spitballing here trying to think aloud that why can't a structure be created that if a person who is making 10 lakh fixed income why can't the government help them right in terms of automating everything ki aapko tax bharna bhi nahi hai right automatically money will be deducted automatically you know these things can be optimized send reminder from the government send so can't such an automated system be created the first thing that we need to identify if a person is getting 10 lakh income how will we identify what are the income sources we can't be done no it can't be done no there can be multiple sources of income mm -hmm. for example i might be earning my salary i might be getting rent from some property i might have made some capital gains in the stock market mm -hmm. so dividing that income sources into different streams yeah. is very difficult for each individual the second is that not everybody has a bank account yet that means that not all the income is coming into the bank account. So the government cannot trace mm -hmm. how exactly and where exactly are people getting the income from. Right. So, so these are some of the practical difficulties and therefore that kind of a structure may not be feasible at this stage. Right. So quickly summarizing, so basically the thing is that an automated system looks wonderful because it saves people a lot of time. I really value time, so I wish that such a system could have been built. But to cut the long story short, the problem here is that people can have diverse sources of income, sometimes multiple clubbed together. So that nature of income, unless it can be established, such an automated system can't be created for a very large populace. So that becomes like a little bit of a challenging issue. But I would encourage all CAs who are watching this or people who work with the IT department to come up with some kind of system which can help us save time. So that would always be a push because it will make the systems more effective uh, in terms of saving time. So okay, moving on, uh, the expectations from the budget. So I was reading, so there are four or five key expectations. One is around fiscal prudence. So this is a term that keeps coming up. So you can, can you quickly help us understand what fiscal prudence means? Fiscal prudence basically means that whatever income you're getting, you're spending it in a wise manner, in a productive manner, yeah. which helps in the long-term growth of the country. Right, so that indirectly ties into that how much revenues you are making and in relation to that how much debt you are incurring or taking plus how much expenditures you are making and right. how you're spending that debt and how you're where exactly are you spending that money right. so cap for example capital expenditure is a good thing where exactly you're putting that money is very very important okay so the second point is around short-term capital gains tax and long-term capital gains tax it was introduced in the equities market in 2018 and the stock market corrected quite aggressively it created a lot of pain for investors so looking at the current dynamics in the market especially around stock market that has been very volatile it hasn't given much returns over the last one one and a half years do you see it going up down what is it that your personal viewpoint here would be not the professional viewpoint so short-term capital gains tax has been there for some quite some time and LTCG, the long-term capital gains tax, was introduced quite recently. Now whether it should be increased or de decreased, I can't really comment. Um, it really depends on individual to individual basis and of course everybody would want it to be decreased. But it is something which does definitely affect the market sentiments and can result in volatility in the market. And of course, Akshat can comment more on it, how animal spirits or market sentiments are affected by what the government introduces in its budget. Sure, so we'll do like an analysis of the budget on stock market tomorrow. And if you want uh, the ma'am to be here, please comment and like this video. Let's move on to third point, which is around populist budget. And there has been talks and this seems like a rational talk to me that the exemption limits in terms of claiming deductions hasn't been increased for the last 10 years, but inflation has gone up quite aggressively. So do you think that these type of exemption limits should be increased? It helps the middle class definitely. Yes, uh, in my personal opinion, it should be increased. Standard deduction, for example, for salaried individuals was introduced up to rupees 50,000. So that was a good uh, act and uh, it was introduced a few years back. So mm -hmm. it has been quite some time and even the tax labs have not been changed to a very large extent for the last uh, six to eight odd years. So I think this is something that can be looked into in this year's budget. So the next point that is being talked about is the PLI spent and the PLI scheme, production linked incentive scheme. So uh, how it has transpired, if you have been tracking it, the PLI data, and do you think that this is something that the government should look more closely into and offer more support on the PLI front? Yeah, absolutely. PLI scheme was introduced to boost domestic manufacturing and it has, uh, it has been introduced across sectors. For example, in manufacturing, electronics, defense, and so on and so forth. So, PLI scheme has proven 
to a very large extent to be effective in improving the domestic manufacturing and especially after the pandemic we have seen uh, we cannot be dependent on external markets on markets outside india so this is something that should be looked into and should be further bolstered for the country right a uh, related point here would be as to how you can use this information to make money so right now consumer durable stocks are got on a lot of petai they haven't gone up for the last one and a half two odd years small cap mid caps haven't really gone up to the extent large caps have gone up these are not stock buying recommendations i'm just telling you how pli can impact all these different categories consumer durables small and mid cap because a lot of that layer of manufacturing happens in india okay final point regarding the disinvestment target so this has been talked about quite aggressively that indian government has done a good job in terms of meeting its disinvestment target or at least accelerating that um do you see like more work being done on this front and what type of budget announcements uh, can happen on this on these lines this is something um, which the government has been working on for the last few years and it has been trying to come out of those sectors where it is actually not needed and in my personal opinion also this is something which is very very essential because this saves a lot of money for the country and it saves a lot of our taxpayers money so this investment targets are there already some of it has already started the work is already being done in um, the government and this will continue to go on for the next few years as well right so before closing out final thoughts on how the budget could impact the stock market so number 1 it's a very very important budget. It. a lot is riding on it it's a pre election year so that again becomes very important uh number 2 i really hope that the government spends a lot of money in terms of doing productive capital productive spend not on in terms of boosting like populist measures per se that is not targeted towards any party but just generally speaking that is what good for the economy would be any other final points that you would like to add that what type of budget can help india so just two three key points and i'll summarize what we discussed here tax rationalization is very important because it ensures that we have a wider net of population who are actually paying the taxes and the onus of paying taxes does not fall on only one segment of the population second is spending money on capital formation that is investing in humans in human skills in human education in healthcare and also spending in productive capital assets formation for example dams roads that is something that is required for infrastructure development and finally the third important point is rationalization of subsidies and i think we did not cover it in extensive in this video that means that reducing and rationalizing the amount of subsidy that is given out to different segments of the population this is something which can we can discuss later on right. in subsequent videos also but yeah these are the three basic points that the budget should be looking into all right thank you so much for joining us and if you want us to cover budget more holistically in a fun manner in a light hearted manner and still learn a lot do comment like this video share it with your friends then we'll be happy